Good morning, believer. You're a week into this study. Today's question is, how can I know the will of God? How to know the will of God? That's a big enough question for a book. And it's important. After all, if Christ is now your master and you want to obey him, you must know what he wants you to do. So let's start with, how do I know what God wants me to do when it's a matter of conduct? It's obvious the Bible doesn't cover every detail of modern day living. Matters of everyday activity now were unknown when the Bible was written. But one thing you can be sure of, the Bible contains principles which cover every situation. I'll mention one and you can apply the principle to any other behaviors you think of. Some things some can and others cannot. This doesn't refer to sin, nobody should do that. But in matters about which the Bible is silent, remember, God deals with people individually. Don't expect everyone to fit into your mold. I knew a pastor who played two sets of tennis five days a week, and then he became a missionary. On the mission field, he felt conviction from the Holy Spirit about spending three or four hours that many days a week on the tennis court, and he felt the Lord wanted him to quit playing tennis. So the entire time he was on the mission field, he never played another set of tennis. When he retired as a missionary and went back into pastoring, the Lord released him to play tennis again. When it comes to your conduct, consider others. Some things which you find acceptable might cause another Christian to fall. Paul once said, if acting a certain way would cause another Christian to stumble, then he'd be willing to never do it again, even if he saw no wrong in it himself. That means if you were to meet that man while he was serving as a missionary, you'd be mature enough not to ask him to play a set of tennis, even if you were an avid tennis player. When it comes to how you behave, ask yourself this question. Is this glorifying to God? You're, you're now Jesus' representative in the world in which you live, and you, you should do nothing to bring shame or reproach upon the Lord or his mission. To help you be guided by your love for Jesus when you're doing stuff, ask yourself this. Will this be pleasing to the Lord? If you make that the ruling question of your decisions on conduct, you're not going to go far wrong. So, how can you know God's will when you've got to make a decision? Now I'm talking about life decisions, not matters of conduct. There's going to be times when you just don't know which course of action to follow. How, how do you decide? First, be patient. Learn to wait on God until he indicates his will to you. Time has a way of working things out. Don't be rash. Don't make a major decision until the path is clear. Seek the advice of other Christians. Don't be a loner. Let your pastor or some mature Christian be your confidant. Be sure it is someone who will keep your confidence. Someone who is not involved in the problem can see the various angles of the problem more clearly than you can. And be sure to commit matters to the Lord. <laughs> How do you do that? List the reasons for and against a certain course of action and prayerfully consider the matter for a time. Then decide to move in one direction or the other. Remove from your mind as much of your own desire as possible. Then ask the Lord to block your path if it's not his will. After a decade or so of doing this, you'll get more and more sensitive to hearing God's voice in matters of important decisions. I want to close today with knowing the will of God when it comes to getting along with others. Now this isn't usually discussed as a matter of the will of God, but it is one of the most important aspects of Christian living. If you haven't learned this yet, you will sooner or later discover Christians are not perfect. As in your case, God is trying to develop their character to make them more like Jesus. Some people you're just gonna like instinctively and others will not be particularly attractive to you. Just remember this, there are traits in you which some may not find especially attractive. The most important gift you can ask from God is the gift of love. Love for God, love for others. Love includes all the other traits God wants to develop in you. Love will keep you walking close to the Lord. Love for others will make you considerate of them. Love will make you want to win others to the Lord. God can even give you a love for the unlovable. 
In John chapter 7, verses 16 and 17, in the message version, Jesus said, I didn't make this up. What I teach comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who wants to do his will can test this teaching and know whether it's from God or whether I'm making it up. A person making things up tries to make himself look good. If something is God's will, it will honor God. If it honors someone or something else, you might want to reconsider. Loving Father, thank you for the indwelling Holy Spirit and his ministry in the hearts of those that are your children. Give me a teachable spirit, I pray, and guide me into all truth. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.